After winning with Atalanta their first ever Scudetto, Thomas Lavales joined the England national team for the Euros 2028. But realistically, instead of whom he is going to play in this team, for now he is not even on the bench. And the composition is occupied by the team captain Jude Bellingham. And the second choice here is Cole Palmer. England started the tournament super confident with the win against Sweden 4-1. The very next game they beat current title holder Spain and took their revenge in the replay of the 2024 Euros final. The last game in the group of death they met Portugal. Portugal started this game aggressively and were close to score a couple of times but Pickford was good between the sticks. But eventually they opened the score with a beautiful long shot in the 23rd minute. Not long after that, England equalized the score with the help of Jude Bellingham. In the 17th minute, Cole Palmer scored a couple of minutes after coming in and England secured the first place in the group. As a result, they got a lucky draw in the quarterfinals and smashed the Poland national team 3-0. For the semi-final against Italy, Thomas Laval was on the bench for the first time in his career due to Foden's injury. That was his chance to make his long-awaited debut for England. But the game itself was very even in the first half. Both teams had their chances and the only goal of the game has been scored in the 50th minute. A gorgeous flick from Declan Rice and England made their way to the third consecutive Euros final, this time in their homeland. In the final, England met Netherlands at the Wembley and was by far the best team on the pitch, having a lot of goal-scoring opportunities, scoring the winning goal in the 39th minute with Jude Bellingham. They dominated Netherlands in the second half as well and finally, after so many dramas and failures, football came home. But for Thomas Laval, this tournament was kinda bittersweet as he did not play a single minute at the Euros. And it was clear he will not win the competition with top tier talents in the club level as well. So he decided to reject Real Madrid's offer. Instead, he soon met Thiago Mota and got charmed with his ideas. In the end, Laval made the decision to join Juventus. The old lady paid his release clause of 80 million euros and Laval is officially the player of the most decorated Italian club. Thiago Mota started the restructuring process in this team and a lot of departures happened in the summer transfer window. Players like Yildiz, Peggioli, Ricky Puch has left the squad and besides Laval only one major transfer in Juventus managed to complete. The transfer of talented Frenchman left midfielder Desiree Douai from Stade René. Thiago Mota prefers attacking football, 4-4-1-1 formation, with the main attacking force Laval and Vlahovic playing down the middle. The opening day of 2028-2029 season, Juventus faced Sassuolo. In the 15th minute, Desiree Due missed a brilliant chance to score the first goal of the season. Soon after that, Sassuolo got the penalty for the fall against Nusa, but Karnaseki saved the shot from Berardi. Anyways, in the 68th minute, Mateus Enrique scored the only goal of the game, so Juventus began the season with a shocking loss. Despite the slow start of the season, after 10 games Juventus managed to clinch the first position in the league and Thomas Laval recorded 4 assists and a goal in his first 10 games for the new club. In November, Laval had his first Turin derby against Torino at the Allianz Stadium and Juventus started the game dreadfully, losing 2-0 already in the 22nd minute. Although Sule got one back in the 30th minute, in the beginning of the second half, Torino scored one more time to restore the two-goal lead. In the 63rd minute, Thomas Laval managed to pull one back after Vlahovic's assist, but it was not enough. Torino won in the derby, 3-2. Already in January, Juventus had equal points with Inter and these two teams were in the top of the table. And in individual level, Thomas Laval had already 14 goal contributions in 24 games, very respectable stats for the first season in Turin. One of the most decisive matches of the season took place on February 10th. Juventus hosted Milan at the Allianz Stadium and Vlahovic opened the score already in the 17th minute. But the hero of the night was Marco Carnesecchi who made two unbelievable saves in the first half to keep the clean sheet. In the 62nd minute, Rovella scored after Laval's assist and Juventus won 2-0 to climb back to the first place in the table. But in the Champions League they totally failed the group stages, ending up only third and continued their journey in the Europa League. The first game against Marseille in the round of 16 was a win, 
In the second match, Moise Keane already scored in the fourth minute to send Juventus through to the quarterfinals, where they smashed Spurs in London 5-2. And despite the loss in the second game, the old lady reached the semi-finals. In the Serie A, after a confident win against Lazio, Juventus hosted another Milan team, Inter. And a win against them could have guaranteed the Serie A trophy for Juventus. But that day Inter were the best team on the pitch. Eduardo scored two times for Nerazzurri to keep Inter in the title race till the last fixture of the season. Meanwhile in the Europa League, Juventus won the first game against Nice 2-0 at the home ground. And the second match seemed just a formality. But Nice caused so much trouble in the first half. Karnaseke did his best to not concede, but eventually Nice scored in the 43rd minute. Luckily in the second half, it was more or less an even match and Juventus managed to keep one goal lead in the tie and proceed to the final. Simultaneously fighting for the Serie A title, last game against Roma will be the decider. Bianconeri need a win against the Wolves to secure the Scudetto. And to be fair, the old lady played that game with a great desire and scored already in the 14th minute astonishing solo goal from Thomas Laval. Juventus did not stop there. And soon Laval Vlahovic pair organized two more goals to give Juve a very comfortable lead in the end of the first half. Despite conceding in the 69th minute from Pellegrini, Bianconeri secured the win in this game and long waited record breaking 37th Scudetto in their history. But in the Europa League final, they have the toughest opponent to overcome. Manchester City is the team to beat to win this trophy. As expected, City started the game as a favorite and scored already in the 11th minute. Lamine Yamal on the scoreboard. In the second half, both doubled their lead, leaving Juve with a little to none chance of saving this game. But soon enough, in the 64th minute, Thomas Laval scored for the old lady to give fans a small hope. In the 91st minute, Laval found himself a shooting angle in the opponent's box and he tried, but Ederson made a brilliant save to win the Europa League trophy for Manchester City. A heartbreaking miss from Thomas and Bianconeri lost the opportunity to win the European trophy. Two stars of this team, Dusan Vlahovic and Thomas Laval, had around 40 goal contributions this season. Vlahovic has become the top scorer in the league, meanwhile Laval won the top assister race, the real duo of the dreams. Newly reborn Juventus, especially an uplifting performance from their best players, forced the board to take serious actions in the summer transfer window. And despite departures happened, Rabio and Chiesa left the club, Juventus did a fantastic job in the transfer market, buying the transfer of Quentin Timber to share the central midfielder spot with Rovella. For the right back position, Juve board included Bunderson in the direct swap deal for Malo Gusto. And finally, Savio had been signed for 17 million euros as a replacement for Federico Chiesa. In addition to these transfers, three more players have been signed for the squad depth mainly to strengthen the defense. This team looks better than ever with the highest ambitions both in the Serie A and in the Champions League. This time Juventus started the season with a home match against Cremonese and Laval opened the score already in the 7th minute. The second goal scored by Vlahovic was enough to cut the first win in the season. In the Champions League Juventus were in the same group with Barca and the clash for the first place between these two clubs was intense. In the first game at the Camp Nou, Juventus opened the score in the 60th minute with the help of Dusan Vlahovic. 15 minutes later, Vitor Roque equalized the score, Barca took the advantage and nearly scored in the 84th minute from the direct free kick. But Bianconeri fought till the end and one last attack, Laval sent Vlahovic to the rendezvous with the keeper and he scored his second of the night to grab three precious points in this game. The game against Rams at the Allianz Stadium started not very promising for Juve. They conceded already in the 19th minute, but again, the usual suspects organized the equalizer for Juve. Vlahovic to Laval and the ball is in the net. In the 65th minute, Vlahovic scored himself a winning goal of the game. But in the Serie A, things were not looking as bright and the game against Napoli at the Diego Maradona showed that Juve was not yet ready to compete in two fronts with same success and as a result, 5th place in the Serie A after 10 games.
The last game in the Champions League group stages against Victoria, Juventus dictated their will. Laval with a goal and an assist to secure the first spot after six games. And in January, things are already looking much better in the league. Third, only three points behind Milan. And in addition to Vlahovic and Laval, Rovella showing a great form with 15 goal involvements. In the Champions League round of 16, Juventus won their first game against Atletico Madrid at the Vandra Metropolitana. And in the second match, they just need to keep this score to proceed to the quarterfinals. That was a very tall game till the 80th minute, when surprisingly Atletico took the lead, the goal from Joao Felix. But Juve forced the attack to score before the full time. An unforeseen hero, Quentin Timber, scored in the 84th minute from the Vlahovic's assist. So the old lady progressed in the competition. Next two matches against Leipzig in the quarterfinals were the easiest in this campaign for them. But in the semis, Juve matched up against historically the worst possible opponent, Real Madrid. They beat Bianconeri in the first game at the Santiago Bernabeu 2-1. Juventus fans suffered too much from Real Madrid in past. It is the time for the old lady to break the curse and win against the Champions League kings. But again, Real Madrid was dominating the game in the first half, forcing Karnaseki to make the save after save. In the second half, Quentin Timber had an opportunity to score, but Lunin was good and parried the shot at the near post. Juve continued to seek the ways to score this game and in the 85th minute, Thomas Laval produced an amazing pass to Vlahovic and he equalized the aggregate score. The game went to an extra time, Juventus were playing with the unmatched desire, but everything could have ended in the 110th minute if not an amazing save from Karnaseki, probably the best one of the season. And when the game was approaching to its culmination, Quentin Timber found himself in the opponent box with the ball, a cutback, and Savio smashed the ball into the net, and that was it. Juventus finally won against Real Madrid in the Champions League and reached the final. But before that game, they had another important match, this time against Inter Milan, and the win in that game could have got them the second Scudetto in back-to-back -back seasons. That game at the Allianz Stadium was the most probably one of the worst for Bianconeri. They conceded in the 58th minute. And even worse, Inter scored again in the 64th minute, killing every hope for Juve to win that game. Although Vlahovic pulled one back after Laval's assist, but that was not enough. No Serie A title for Juve. The only hope to save this season was to win the last game, the most important one. And again, Lahovic and Laval recorded approximately 40 goal contributions each, one of the best duos of the world football. But can they lead the old lady to another Champions League triumph? Here it is. The final game of the season, Thomas Laval returns to his hometown and the Old Trafford stands welcome him back. One civilian at the Theatre of Dreams could become hero if Juve beat Arsenal. But again, the second year in a row, Juventus is not a favorite to win the European trophy. Arsenal is looking much solid and they open the score in the 21st minute. They score second goal as well after two minutes, but luckily for Juve, there was an offside. The goal was ruled out. In the 36th minute, the rarest attack from Bianconeri ended up with a goal from Vlahovic. And again, the score was equal. Despite that goal, Arsenal continued to play better, a touch sharper that night. They took the lead once again in the 62nd minute. This could legit have been the end of the story for Juventus. But they simply refused to surrender and managed to find the equalizer in the 84th minute. Savio scored for the old lady. Arsenal jumped forward to score right away. They pressed high to win the ball back as soon as possible. But Karnaseki managed to find Thomas Laval with the long ball. He passed it to Savio. Savio found Quentin Timber with an amazing through ball. One on one against Allison. And as a high profile number 9, Timber put the ball into the net. An Predicted hero, Dutchman won the Champions League trophy for Juventus. What an unbelievable scene. All of the talent in that team, central midfielder Quentin Timber became the hero of Turin.
This was the first Champions League trophy for Thomas Laval as well. But he was silent that night at his homeland, at the stadium he dreamed to play all his life. And everything has its reason in sport. Days before that game, Laval learned from news that he has been shockingly left out from the England national team squad for the 2030 World Cup. 